is he confuses literally everything he says about William Lane Craig. Everything. James White confuses everything. So it would have been a true sentence. I don't think that's happened since he's been older. I think that he's been at this for a while. Well, so. <laughs> well, so. Uh, and I don't think that he's a very competent apologist. I don't think that he's a competent exegete. Uh, an expert on Islam, like Dave Wood says, he's not the guy to listen to a lot of times. So, you know, I know that it's, it's customary before you rip somebody a new one for saying dumb things that you want to try to say a bunch of positive things. I have nothing positive to say about James White except he needs to repent for being ugly to Leighton Flowers. How many times has James White been on Ben Shapiro's show? No. How many times has he tried to evangelize Ben Shapiro? None. Publicly, anyway. Okay. So, basically, we have a guy here attacking another brother in Christ for sharing with someone that there's good reason to believe that Jesus was dead, buried, rose again, and that the guy needs to repent and trust in Jesus for his salvation. Here it's going to be a bit looser than that because James White doesn't really say too much that is of substance. It's more or less just, look how silly this is. What but he does go for a full hour. And notice what we're doing. We're doing exactly what James White does. Play a fragment of a sentence and then talk for an hour. Uh, I don't know if that's lost on James White. A lot of things get lost on James White. I don't know. If yeah. that, I don't appreciate most, if not the overwhelming majority, of presuppositional lists because they're horrible and they're jerks and they're... But, Excellent. But, I was impressed with that. I wonder if James White will be impressed with that. Because so far he's found you unimpressive. Well, yeah, but that seems to be fine. James White's not impressed with anybody but himself. Even though he's not the best resource of this, when he's talking about other things, James White is tolerable. <laughs> Out of all of his debate losses, which one was your the, the least he got? No, I, even the debate that everybody cringes at, which is the Bart Ehrman debate about manuscripts, oh, horrible. I thought I thought he held his own pretty good. He got his butt kicked so bad that he abandoned his plans to get a, a, a PhD in Islamic studies to go get a PhD in textual criticism. Complete that's how lie. he lost. I, I thought it was pretty good. No, I don't know if that's really what he did. I, I don't practice divination like he does, <laughs> but I, I'm guessing that's what happened. Um, but no, uh, he... I, I need to... Uh, I need to find a little sound thing. Give me a second to get the witching rod put back in the closet. Yeah, no, oh. I need to find a little ding every time Pritchett lies because you, you'd almost not get to hear anything because the, the ear of the man is just utterly clueless uh, or he's just willing to pop off anything that pops into his head, he'll just fire it out there um, because what he just said there was just well, laughably it, absurd, just laughably absurd. If you'll recall, the, the word that I was kept posting to you when you were driving to Tucson was, this man really, these guys just despise you. Oh, well, he says that. Just despises Despi you. Oh, yeah, he, well, yeah, he, he, he actually says that. But I'm not going to comment on this. I just, it's, I just wanted to say, I, I, I need to find a little ding sound to, to play uh, just for all the... Really crazy. Things. He's tolerable on other things, but he shoots himself in the foot anytime he talks about Romans nine, or anytime he talks about John six, or anytime he talks about Ephesians one, or anytime he talks about Genesis fifty twenty, or anytime he talks about the Bible. He's typically bad. I call I call him a fake G. You know, fake he's a fake G that peddles this backward jetics. Back I have my own lexicon, so you'll have to join the forum and talk to my. Uh, Keeper of the of the dictionary of the lexicon, that's Drew McLeod. Yeah, he keeps all these things. On it. But James White, I might not impress him, but he's not impressive at all. Works for Strobel. Works for Hunter. Works for me. Works for the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. But forget all that. James White is speaking. Yes, and again, you think about it. Do you, do you understand? Do you understand the teleo? Let's let's start there. In Right. This makes no sense. No, and uh, what, he, no, it makes perfect sense. What it is is a bunch of sanctimonious pseudo piety blather. Is what it is. He's just cloaking himself in a. Are you flattening it out, Jonathan? No, he's cloaking himself in a piety cloak in the way that he cloaks himself in Technicolor dream coats, you know, or dream ponchos. Cloaking himself in pi that's all this is is, is just pseudo pious ranting yeah. and rhetoric. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Don't let him judge God. Well, that sounds pious, yeah. right? Yeah. But it doesn't mean anything. No. He'll be drunk and needing <laughs> correction from... Okay, okay, I said I wasn't going to interrupt it. Because it's the cumulative of effect that, that is absolutely destructive of these guys' credibility. Um, but I, I just, just have to explain that one. I had made reference 
to a key apologetic issue between classical, evidential, any man-centered, synergistically-based apologetic methodology, and presuppositionalism. And that specifically is that in the very approach that we want to take to the rebel sinner, we do not want by our own actions to communicate to that individual that they have the right to judge God, but that God has the right to judge them. Now, their response was, well, they're already judging that. They're already doing that. I know. The point is that in our approach, in the presentation of our argumentation, we do not want to communicate to them anything that would encourage them in their autonomous rebellion against God to judge God. But this goes back to our soteriology and our anthropology. These men believe that man is autonomous and has the capacity to exercise autonomous choice to choose Christ. And so they can't even begin to grasp hold of the, the fact that apologetically, I would want to be consistent between what I believe as to their relationship to God and what I'm saying to them and how I would say it. Um, so that was what the judging God, this, this, and this is pious blather, et cetera, et cetera. No, it was actually key to an apologetic methodology and approach. These men do not understand what they are denying. They gave no evidence of having any meaningful first level reading in Van Til or Bonson or Oliphant or whoever. I, I don't, I don't see any evidence whatsoever of any first level reading in those areas, or and if they have, then they didn't bother to read very well. His fellow elders who drink a lot of beer. Oh, okay, there was the lie. Um, just a shot, just slander, just simple slander uh, that needs to be repented of. Um, direct forward slander, that's just, but it was just, this is part of the milieu. This was just a constant element of, of everything. I, it makes me wonder what kind of atheist he talks to. He doesn't. I talk to them all the time. He doesn't. The first words out of their mouth after I don't know and neither do you is, what does he do on this show? I haven't watched much of this. Does he basically just whine about other people? A lot of times. And sometimes he gets into, like, uh, like I used to watch a show years ago until I realized how ridiculous and uninformed and uneducated he really is and how he's a terrible exegete, a fake doesn't really know much about the ancient world or much about the Bible in its own historical and sociocultural context, which was why he butchers every text in the world. If you want to, there, there are competent Calvinists, by the way, like uh, G.K. Bill is an excellent Calvinist, and Daryl Fox. Is an uh, these are the type of theologians that would laugh James White out of the room if James White started spewing his horrible misunderstanding of Paul's use of the Old Testament, G.K. Bill and Daryl Bobber, like, here's the construction paper and crayons, go sit in the corner, James White, you don't know what you're talking about. And it, but, 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 uh, Layton Flowers is awesome. Yeah, Layton Flowers, I James White Layton is Flowers. unworthy to untie his sandals or whatever, but if you got a problem with it, with us talking this way, like, you need to understand, this is a man who is attacking, without question, the most prominent debating apologist on the planet right now. And this guy was evangelizing Ben Shapiro, one of the most prominent conservatives on the planet right now. And it's completely unnecessary. Evangelism and apologetics work like I really think God's called me to. I'm glad other people are doing that. But listen, James White can sit around and gripe about the way that William Lane Craig evangelized Ben Shapiro all he wants to. The rest of us are going to actually go out and do evangelism. Yeah. No, let me, let's make this personal. The Christian apologists who are not listening to presuppositional whiners. This is why presuppositionalism is not only ineffective, but uh, if that's your main thing and that's your only tool, it's not only ineffective, but it's lazy. Yes. I was thinking that as I was listening to him speak a while ago, it is lazy apologetics. It's lazy jetics. It's I backwardsetics. Yeah, backwardsetics, lazy jetics, lazy jetics. Yeah, I don't. This whole thing is James White's a train wreck. It
I was completely ineffective. I probably made that person even less inclined than before because I was a complete jerk to them. It doesn't, it doesn't matter because they weren't regenerated. Because right. all I did was make a search in after a search in after a search in and call them names instead of have a conversation like a normal person. But I stumped on my presuppositions, which is the only biblical, you can't find it in the Bible, it's the only biblical apologetic. And so I'll pat myself on the back. That's my consolation prize. Look how sanctimonious and holy and pious I am. And Van Til will be so pleased when I get to heaven. Yes. <laughs> James White is just spouting off nonsense. Now I know he's never done much. He can talk about how he spent a lot of time in Salt Lake City 30 years ago witnessing the Mormons. Probably hasn't done it since, because this is how I know he doesn't spend a lot of time evangelizing skeptics or just you know people on the street, because you would never talk like that about your experiences. You would know what they say, and you would also know that they don't care what you think they should believe about it. Mm How -hmm. would Jeff Durbin sometimes and evangelize since he's your elder? Go do some of that, because it sounds like it's been too long since you have. These, what? Yeah. Do, do you know anything about um, historical Jesus studies? That's just logically problematic. No, it's stupid. That's what I was saying more nicely. Yeah, that's it's logically problematic. Stupid. It's stupid. Same thing. Yes. <laughs> it just is. Good. Uh, I think that's the only ground. Yeah, you're uh, a Christian. I'm glad it, you don't. It, it is so. It is so telling about James White that he so wants to disagree with William Lane Craig right. that even on the preeminent, the importance of the resurrection <laughs> of Jesus, I got. I got. I'm not going to dispute that it's. Some central kind of, but but gosh, I'm trying. So, I, do I have to agree with Craig here? <laughs> Dang it! Yeah, shut up and let him talk. It's very common for both Jews and Muslims to misunderstand the nature of what makes the resurrection. And and so and, and William Lane Craig um, makes that point better than Jesus. you. Shut up. <laughs> Actually, what he just That's said again. I hate to dis, I hate right. to agree with what him, what, what he just said is going to be a lot smarter than what he's about to say. Is, is right. Relevant. It's a cheaper shot than the ones I take at James White's expense. I do not have much respect for James White as a person, as a as a as a theologian, as a scholar, as an apologist, because of his career of attacking Christian ministers and uh, ministers of the gospel, and especially attacking personal friends of mine. Now, some people will argue, well, you're just. You just don't like him because he attacks your friends. Yeah, I don't like, I'm from yep. Arkansas. We don't like people who attack our friends, especially over dumb things. And James White has made a career of it. So I hold this man with a certain level of disrespect and contempt, specifically. I don't hold all presuppositionalists that way. I don't hold all people who are complementarians that way, if they disagree with me on that, or they disagree with me on Calvinism, or whatever. But with this man... This one guy, I am happy to admit that until he repents of his career of vitriolic behavior towards other Christians and seeking to undermine their ministries and their efforts for the gospel, and specifically repents for uh, his vitriolic rant against a personal friend of mine by the name of Leighton Flowers, to whom he lost a debate on Romans 9 because he didn't address the debate question, um, like Flowers did, um, I'm just not going to speak kindly of it. And this kind of methodological whining reminds me of the kind of stupid whining that people like David Platt and Paul Washer before him were doing. See, this is, again, he doesn't know what he's talking about as far as the But you see his little... So James White thing is, let's not use facts, I guess. This is the most ridiculous kind of attack. This is what people have said that I think is valid, This is, and I agree with this assessment, so I'm going to say it, this is a uh, systemic jealousy and hate parade from White on William Lane Craig that stems from envy. I really think that that's probably true. This is absolutely absurd. And like I said, I would be more respectful yeah. to anybody, uh, well, most people besides James White, but he doesn't... Well, this is this is emblematic of why he doesn't deserve much. Okay, but so there you go. Um, yeah, it's great to be loved, isn't it? It's wonderful. Um, yeah, how many times do we hear stupid, dumb? Uh, you know, uh, all the rest. It, it was it was great. 
I, I really don't think that Dr. Pritchett uh, realizes. Hello? Um, hmm. I thought I had turned that off last time. Oh, I have a browser up. That's why. Oops. Uh, do I need to have this browser up? Um, no, I don't. So I can close that so it won't go bing anymore. Uh, I'm not going to take the time to talk about the transgender issue today. Anyway, um, most people would probably say there's nothing redeemable in that. But because, and especially because, um, you know, you heard his theory that I'm envious of William Lane Craig, and that's why I do this. Here's, here's my theory. I think Dr. Pritchett um, and Dr. Hunter wanted to prove themselves to William Lane Craig as his hatchet men. We'll go out there and we'll attack this guy so you don't have to say a word. And I think that's why they did this. I think they just want to get in with William Lane Craig. They want to be at more of his conferences and invited to more stuff and, and just that kind of thing. That's my, that's, that's my direct theory. Uh, what else would explain someone uh, going to press with something like this when they clearly didn't do any background material? They talk about Act 17. They never offer a meaningful exegesis of Act 17. They say that I misinterpret every text the Bible I've ever addressed. <laughs> that's, a, that's a large portion of the Bible we've done over the years. And I didn't get the feeling that they had actually interacted or even read most of my material. I don't know about you, but I, I don't get that feeling at all. Uh, why do something like this? Well, I think the motivation was to get Craig's attention and, hey, look at me. Uh, type of situation. Because like I said, I'd, I'd never heard of either of these guys before, and so I wonder. But the point is, their misrepresentation of presuppositionalism, their straw man argumentation of it, and their statement that presuppositionalism can be used as part of the apologist's toolkit. So when it's appropriate, you can use it. When it's appropriate, you can't. When it's not, not appropriate, then you don't. No. Um, it doesn't work that way because there is a anthropology, a soteriology, and a theology that underlies presuppositionalism that you reject. Your theology and soteriology, your view of man, is contradictory to the presuppositions of presuppositionalism. And so you may pretend, and obviously there are times I've heard Ravi Zacharias make specific criticisms that sound very much like what a presuppositionalist would be saying. But the issue is, can you be consistent across the board in that way? And without the proper theological, soteriological grounding. And this brings us back to the other issue. Theology determines apologetics, not the other way around. Not the other way around. And so this idea that presuppositionalism could just be one methodology that you, you know, if you're in one particular argument and it would work well there, great. If not, then you can just throw it out. That is, that is not uh, a proper understanding of presuppositionalism in the first place. So I don't get the feeling, you know, when I was driving up there, uh, I actually switched out of this for a while. I was listening to uh, Van Til's uh, theory of Christian knowledge. What a huge difference. Uh, listening to Van Til and then going back to that, it was, uh, you know, put the, put the clutch in, burn it out. Um, but I just don't, I just don't think these gentlemen really understand the issues, but they're very quick to say it's everybody else, uh, that I'm the one, it's just all my fault, I guess, uh, that I don't get it. But like I said, what really struck me was the couple times I really hit upon a key philosophical issue. They just were like... Zoom, went right past him. They didn't even notice it was happening, uh, which is uh, which is rather interesting. Okay, 